What's up, freaks? What's going on? This is Steve Does, episode number four. You know, every Thursday we meet here for Steve Does. Every Tuesday, Steve says. Steve says a little more on the mental side of things. Steve does the actual physical, the nutrition, the training, the exercise, what you need to actually be doing. Tuesday, we talk about how you think. Thursdays, we talk about how you freaking do. Steve Does, episode number four. Just getting you guys pulled up on the screen here so I could see any questions you have. Any questions you have, fitness-related, nutrition, about your training, your workouts, your eating, your diet, whatever you have, you can ask those questions right here. I have them right here, live feed coming in, and we will hook you up. So this is episode number four. We're talking about training, exercise, overtraining, and a little bit about recovery. It's, you know, every week, it's this is the fitness broadcast on training nutrition peak freak style because you know we do shit a little differently so basically it's all about what are you struggling with in health and fitness and mainly weight loss and your nutrition what are you struggling with right now what is going what's not working for you what do you need help with that's what steve does is all about and we're going to take care of that for you today it's all about what is your definition of training the questions that came in Today and this week had a lot to do with actual training. How much training should I be doing? How much training is too much? What's the best type of training? How much recovery do I need in my training? All that type of stuff is what we're going to go over today because you know and you're going to get a different kind of answer than usual because peak freaks do shit a little different. We train different, we eat different, we act different, and we fucking are different. Any questions, put them right down there in the comments. I'm going to post you guys up right here so I can see... Any questions you have as we're rolling? So each, each week, Steve does, we learn about, you're going to learn about our unique training systems. We're going to prepare you for the freaking invasion with our weight loss strategies, nutritional discipline, and educational eating. Notice, you know, you know, I didn't say anything about any diet or any of that crap because there is no specific diet. It's all about nutritional discipline and educational eating and then training the right way is what we're going to go over the training aspect today because this is about fitness, health, nutrition, and training. The last three weeks, we talked about your fitness, then we talked about your health, then we talked about your nutrition, and what that really means in a peak freak world, in the real world, not in some textbook or in some doctor's office, what it means in the trenches when you're talking about getting results. And today, we're talking about the training aspect. So any questions that you have, put them down there in the comments. We will hook you up and get them answered live. We always have different topics for for these episodes, but it's really based off of your questions, your needs, your problems. What do you need help with at the moment? What is what is slowing you down in your in your weight loss and your fitness results? So we're going to start off if, if who, who could tell me what is if anyone knows our core value number six, because that's kind of what today is based off of when it comes to the training aspect. Because we know training is a big important part of it, obviously, not just the nutrition. Today, we're going to focus on the training side. So who in like five seconds can tell me what is core value number six? Who's cheating out there as I take a quick sip? Someone stole all my Herbalife jugs. I'm drinking a, a, a monster drink for you because we need to be a monster for you freaks. So who can tell me core value number six? If not, we're going to keep rolling. You got five, four, three, two, one, done. Core value number six, peak physique, core value number six is results are important, but not as much as culture and experience. So that means basically the most important thing when it comes to your training is the right, is choosing the right environment to train in before you even worry about what type of training you're doing or how much training you're doing or how much training should you be doing. All that shit is irrelevant until you get yourself in the right environment for training. And that's going to be one of the most important things because you can be at the most fancy place in the freaking world, the biggest, most expensive, the nicest equipment, all the fancy little machines and all that other bullshit. But if you don't fit into the environment and and the culture, you will not get results. And, And the reason is you will not feel like you fit in or you have the support or the accountability or you won't feel like it's that family feeling like we like our peak freaks feel at peak physique. So you will not be consistent and then you will not fucking show up. And if you don't fit in equals not showing up and that equals not getting freaking results. So it really doesn't matter what type of training. So the first thing to think about with training is the environment that you're going to be training in. That is more almost probably more important than the training itself is just getting there, being in an environment that's going to keep you consistent and be supportive and help hold you accountable. 
Rachel Miller hasn't memorized the core values yet. Now that is a disappointment that you couldn't tell me core value, the core value number six, which is results are important, but not as much as culture and experience. All right, so now you, we've established that you need to be in the right training environment before you worry about the type of training or how much training or what's too little, what's too much, because none of that, that shit is going to matter if you don't get in the right environment first. Okay, so you get into the right environment, right? You're comfortable. You're surrounded by a ton of like-minded freaks that have similar goals to yourself, just like our peak freaks have over at Peak Physique. And now is when the other factors start to come into play when you're talking about training and how much and all this other stuff. So first, you need to ask yourself, Are you exercising or are you training? Which one are you doing? You are not exercising at peak physique. I'll tell you that first. You are not exercising at peak physique. But what are you doing? Are you exercising or are you training? You're not exercising at peak. You are freaking training. Now, when when, when you have a trainer or whatever you want to call it, an instructor, do you have a trainer or do you have a coach? So first you need to ask yourself, are you exercising or are you training? Then do you have a trainer or do you have a coach? And we're going to break all this shit down for you, peak freestyle, because you know that that's how we do it. Rosa's joining us. What's up, Rosa? Rosa's joining us. First, Steve says, you are fucking awesome, Rosa. Who else is in there? Rachel is fucking awesome, even though she didn't memorize the core values. So do you have a trainer or do you have a coach? We are not trainers at peak. We are coaches. We are not just training you in your exercise. We are coaching you in your training. That shit sounds all twisted and fucked up, but it makes sense in my head. And that's really all that matters. And it gets results. So let's just backtrack a second because this shit is kind of twisted. Are you exercising or are you training? So you want to, we're not exercising at peak, we are training. Do you have a trainer or do you have a coach? Even though you are training at peak physique, you don't have a trainer, you have a coach. Because we are not just training you to exercise and teaching you some exercise and that's it. Or telling you about the muscles and the bones and digestion and all this other bullshit that's not going to get you any results. A bunch of fancy little mumbo jumbo bullshit. We are coaching you in your training to get you real freaking results. You are a real person. Have a real fucking life. Those textbooks have tons of certifications. You know how much I use those certifications? About 0.000001% every day. Those textbooks don't take into account real fucking people in the real world. They don't take into account people's problems, people's mindset. There's nothing in those books for personal training certifications about the fucking mindset and the psychology None of that shit. Or if there is, it's like a breeze through chapter about some bullshit. It's not teaching you to really coach someone in the real world that has real world fucking problems and and, and, and fucked up things and going through adversity around them. That's what you need to be able to deal with in in coaching, not just training. So first, let's backtrack again. I said, are you exercising or are you training? So what's the difference between exercise and training? You know, I'm going to tell you, right? I'm going to tell you peak freak style. Exercise. So exercise, the real definition of exercise is something done or performed as a means of practice or training. They're saying even training. Look at that. Bodily or mental exertion. That's all it's saying. Bodily or mental exertion. Especially for the sake or of improvement of health. Okay, so training is exercise sounds pretty good, right? And then in the fucking dictionary, they give an example of exercise as when they tell you it in a sentence is Walking is good exercise. So are you just exercising or are you fucking training? Exercise could also mean activity or movement or a lesson or working out. That all could mean exercise. The peak definition of exercise, the Steve does definition of exercise, the peak freak fucking definition of what exercise is. Okay, so here's if you're you're an exerciser. This is sure you show up to the gym. And maybe even you show up consistently on a regular basis all the time because you found that good environment, right? So you need to be training in the right environment, not just exercising in the right environment. So sure you show up because you found an awesome environment like Peak Physique with the Peak Freaks and maybe even consistently, but you rarely show up on time. You're rarely prepared. You're rarely focused. You're running around in circles trying to get your shit together. You're not in tune with what you're about to do and your body and what you need to go through. You're just going through the freaking motions is what you're doing. You're doing the bare minimum in your training sessions. You are not challenging yourself. Now, these are exercises. These are if you're an exerciser. If you're just exercising. Exercising means you're not moving your body in accordance with your goals. You're basically saying you want your goals to be this, but you're moving your body at a different tempo or speed or pace, not moving with a sense of urgency for the goals that you fucking claim that you want. You want to lose fucking 30 pounds in, in six or seven, eight weeks, but you're moving at a, at a snail's pace and never going to get there, not taking the shit seriously. Exercisers are not pushing themselves 
to their limits within you know boundaries of being safe and smart. And we're going to get into that in the overtraining section. You are easily distracted. You're a fucking drifter. Your mind is drifting while you're doing a a workout, an exercise. There are exercises, but you don't want to be an exerciser. There are, you are doing training, but you don't want to be trained by a trainer or you want to be trained by a coach. This is just some peak freak fucked up training math and methodology, but this is the shit that works in the real freaking world. So the exercise is easily distracted. They're doing a, they're, they're doing their workout. They are just thinking, they're fucking drifting. Their mind is all over the place thinking about some food or something that happened at work or some bullshit that they probably have 99% chance they have no bearing on, cannot affect at all. It's just out there somewhere else and shit that's just in their head. So they're not focusing on squeezing that muscle they're working or breathing properly or staying focused or, or in tune with their partner in, in, their, in their peak free training session or whatever they're doing. Exercisers have no real purpose or at least they're in denial of their reason why they need this or why they do it at all. And I got to push it out there because we keep shit, keep shit real. But I'll ask people all the time, what are your goals, right? Because I want to know your goals. I want to know what are your specific measurable goals. And a lot of times I know the broad goal is going to be weight loss. You could, it, we're, we're not stupid. If you see someone, you could assume probably if someone has 70 or 80 pounds to lose that their goal is going to be weight loss. But we still ask them what their goals are so they can give us a, an actual number, a measurable number so we could set up a right training program, set up a time frame for you know what could be achievable for them. But when you have 70, 80 pounds to lose and you know it and we know it and, and everyone else knows it, but you come in and you talk about your goals are just to, to build a little muscle or you just want to tone up or you don't want to lose none of this or whatever that shit is and this shit happens all the time. You're basically just in denial of of the reason why you need this or why you even are doing this exercise at all. And that's what an exerciser does. They're in denial of what their real goals even should be. Not that I could tell you what your goals are, but I could tell you if you need to step up your fucking goal game is what I could do. So an exerciser, basically exercise is maintaining and we know maintenance is fucking death. If you were with us on Steve Says on Tuesday, you knew about you t- choose a path, either ordinary or fucking rock star, right? Ordinary or rock star. Exercisers take the fucking ordinary route. They take the ordinary route. So ask yourself, are you just exercising? Are you? Tell me in here, are you exercising? Who just joined us? Daisy joined us. Liga joined us. Andrew Benner. Margo. Now there's a bunch of motherfucking rock stars that are not ordinary and they are not exercisers. They are not exercising. They're doing exercises, but they're not exercising. Those People, those peak freaks are fucking training. But ask yourself, are you just exercising according to what I just gave you as the real world peak freak definition? Not some bullshit in some textbook that taught you in some college course that ain't going to get you nowhere, that ain't telling you how to deal with real people in the real freaking world. I'm talking about the real peak freak in the motherfucking trenches, in the war, in the battle definition of exercise. Now we're going to go to training. So that was exercise. So then what is training? The, the, in the by the book. Training is the education, instruction, or discipline of a person or thing that is being trained. Now that's, if you think about it, such a much deeper, and that's by the book definition, and it makes a little more sense, such a deeper meaning than what I gave you as the the book definition of exercising or exercises. Education, instruction, discipline, that's training. That's what fucking training is all about, right? So we're still going to give you the peak freak next level definition of it because it goes a little deeper. Or training can mean to the development or forming of habits or thoughts or behavior by discipline and instruction. Now, this is what training is. That's why peak freaks are training. Other bullshit is exercising. Are you exercising or are you training? That's, some, that's a much deeper shit when it comes to training than it is for exercise. Training is the education, instruction, or discipline of a person or thing that is being trained Or the development or forming of habits or thoughts, behaviors by discipline and instruction. That's what training is. That's what you're doing every time you step in the fucking door at at Peak Physique. That's what you're doing all day in your mind. Fucking the mental training and the discipline with your... That's why we call it nutritional discipline. Educational eating. Look at that. You're fucking training. Your diet is training. It's not a diet. It's just training. You're training all day. You're forming habits with discipline and instruction. You are developing thought patterns and behaviors. That's all training. That's why we are fucking, you are training at Peak Physique. You are not exercising. If this makes sense, give me a fuck yeah in the comments. Margo, rock on. Margo is fucking rock star. If this is making sense, if this is clicking in your brain so far, give me a fuck yeah in the comments. Give me a fuck yeah. Training means coaching, discipline, 
educational guidance, instruction. This is what training is. This is what training is about. A foundation, sharpening of all your tools and your abilities. That's what fucking training is. A big difference in just exercising and going through the motions and not putting it all in there. So what's the peak definition of training? Peak definition of training is you are on a fucking mission. You are a goal-striving fucking machine that cannot be stopped and is on an automatic path, steamrolling, running over anything in your path towards your goals. That's fucking training. Training is you have a real reason why you're doing this. Why are you training so hard? Why are you exercising? Why are you training instead of exercising? Because you have a real reason of why you're doing this. A real deep, rooted, emotional reason why you need to do this shit. You need to do this shit. You don't need, you, you want to, but more than you want, you fucking need to. And you accept that and you know that and you, you are fueled by that shit. And that's what training is compared to exercise. Yes, Margo gave me a fuck yeah. Margo is on a mission. Margo is a freak. So you, uh, you're a tra- person that's training. You have a real reason why you're doing this. If you're training, nothing will stop you or distract you. You're not going to be one of those fucking drifters that were just exercising and in a little Pilates class or some other shit. Nothing will stop you or distract you from what you know needs to be done and what needs to be done in order to get to those goals because you are a goal-striving fucking machine. You are, if you're training, you are a fucking rock star. If you're exercising, you are ordinary. It's as simple as that. So I ask you, are you exercising or are you training? Answer me in the comments. Are you exercising or training? Let me know. Let me know if you're exercising or training. Put it in there. What do we got? Yes. So the next thing is, if you're at peak, you are with a coach. You are not with a trainer. But I know we have a lot of people out there that tune in to watch this craziness. So I'm going to ask you this. What are you, do you have a trainer or do you have a coach? Now you might think, oh, since we're training, I must have a trainer and you don't. I'm going to tell you the difference. So what's the difference between a trainer and a coach? A trainer is a person who trains athletes or it, it really just athletes is what it says, but whatever athletes, everyone that comes to the gym is a freaking athlete in my mind. So always pumped and ready. Vanessa training. Fuck yeah. Margo training, training. That's what I like to see a little freaking fire. A little intensity, a little enthusiasm, a real, uh, some real shit. There's not enough real shit in the world. Someone told me I curse too much. Fuck that. No such thing. That's the real world. This is real freaking life. This is not a textbook. This is not some college course. This is not some freaking n- nutritionist with some copy and paste paper. This is real shit that's going to give you real results and is taking into account your real life and your adversity and your family and your life and your schedule and the shit that goes on in the fucking world. This is what it's about. This is about preparing for the freaking invasion. The invasion's coming and you peak freaks will be prepared and I will fucking make sure that you are prepared for the invasion. What do we got? Daisy Fuentes, you're a rock star. That was Tuesday about rock stars. Today I asked if you are exercising or if you are training. Real shit. Real shit, Daisy. All right, so now if you're at peak physique, we know you have, you are, have a coach. But if you're not, do you have a trainer or you have a coach? So a trainer is a person who trains athletes. That sounds very fucking impressive, right? A person who trains athletes is a trainer. Okay, fucking blah, boring bullshit. You know what a peak definition of a trainer is? A trainer? And I'll go do some weightlifting sometimes just to get in my zone, put on the headphones and go to, go to a, a, whatever and go do my weightlifting wherever I, could, wherever I could find heavy enough weights, right? And I see trainers out there. I study them. And a trainer, the peak definition of a trainer, not our coaches, at peak we have coaches. A peak definition of a trainer is our fucking rep counter. They're a professional rep counter. They are an overpaid timekeeper just telling 10 seconds, 15 seconds, okay, 5 seconds left, 4 seconds left, 3 seconds, okay, you're counting reps. One push up, there's two, three, four, five. You know what they also are? They're a fucking phone texter. They're an Instagram fucking scroller. That's what a fucking trainer is. They're a floor sitter. They're an arms folder. They're a hands in the fucking pocket habiter. Fucking offender is what they are. They're offenders and they should be put in fucking jail. It's criminal, the shit that goes on with trainers. That's why we don't have trainers up people. We have fucking coaches. A trainer is a, uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Or let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And that's all they fucking say. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And then tell me how much time I have left. Motherfucker, I could use a stopwatch that's going to be more effective in coaching me than you, motherfucker. So... Don't tell me, come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Tell me how to do it. How can I do it better? How am I doing? How should I do it? What should I be thinking about? That's what fucking coaching is. Cues, corrections, modifications, motivation. That's a coach. 
that's a coach helping you through this shit, helping you get through the rough times. Someone, someone who, a, a, a trainer is someone who blames you when you fail and oh, because you didn't, or you didn't do this and, or eat that or show up enough times and, you know, then has, they blame you for when you don't get the results, but then takes all the credit when you succeed that, yes, I got you to do this and this. Which one is it? You can't have both sides of it, buddy. So a trainer is going to blame you when you fail and take the credit when you succeed. That is a trainer. That is a trainer for you. A trainer might be book smart and can tell you every muscle and bone and joint and ligament and fucking tendon and, and the points of insertion of every single muscle and every little detail about the, the human body, but has no clue how to guide someone. No clue how to help someone actually lose weight that has a real fucking life that didn't come out of a textbook. And, you know, so someone that's been dying to lose weight for years and years and years, a trainer has no clue how to deal with that. But they'll tell you about where, where, where that muscle inserts on, on the bone and all this other shit. I don't know that shit. I don't know that shit. Sure, I passed all those bullshit certifications. I have tons of them. I could fill up a fucking wall with them. But none of them give results. None of them give results. None of them take into account the fucking human factor or sort of human. The fucking freak factor is what they don't take into account. We're dealing with fucking freaks. So that was a trainer. Now we're going to talk about a coach. A coach to give instruction or advice to a capacity or instruct. Now that's a little different than a fucking trainer, right? A, a, a coach is a mentor, a teacher, an educator. That's what a coach is. The peak definition of a coach. What do we got going on here? Daisy Fuentes. So right. That's me. Margo, all kinds of coaches supporting and guiding and inspiring all. Yes, yes, yes. Those are trainers. They are the fucking, I call them the Instagram fucking scrollers. The arm crossers. The overpaid timekeeper. The fucking professional rep counter. That's what trainers are. But what is the peak definition of a coach? That's all we will accept at peak are fucking coaches. What is it? I forgot on trainer too. They have that dick do, right? They have the dick do. Where the things stick out farther than a dick do. You know what a dick do is, right? So to, what is a coach? Peak definition of a coach? A coach is a guide. A freaking leader. They're guiding you. Guiding you on the step. We're not going to do it for you. We're going to fucking help you. We're going to boot you in the ass when you need a boot in the ass. But we're going to fucking guide you. You're the fucking hero and we are your guide. I don't want to be the fucking hero. I want you to be the fucking hero. I'm just going to guide you on your fucking hero journey is what I'm going to do. So a peak coach is a guide. That's all we are. We are a leader. We are someone who understands you. People, we are people who have been there and done that and knows what it takes. A, a, a coach is someone who's living the life every fucking day. Not only talking the talk, but walking the motherfucking walk. That is a coach. That is a coach. They've been there. They've done that. They know what the fuck you're thinking. They know what's going through your mind, through your head. More than just what's going through your body. Sure, they know that shit too. That shit ain't important if you can't deal with what the fuck's up here. So a, a coach... It's someone who takes the blame when you fail and gives you credit when you succeed. So if you fail, guess what? If you didn't show up to the gym, I'm not going to blame you for not showing up. I'm going to blame myself for not making sure you showed up to the gym. If you're not eating the right foods, I'm not going to blame you for not having the discipline. I'm going to blame myself for not inspiring you to have the discipline or maybe not showing you clearly enough what you should be eating or how much you should be eating and not educating, not giving you the nutritional discipline or the educational eating that you need. I'm going to fucking blame myself when you put that fucking nasty shit in your mouth. I'm going to blame myself, not you, because then I obviously didn't impose my will. I didn't guide you well enough to become the fucking hero. So I'm not going to blame you for, I'm going to blame my fucking self. And that's what a coach is going to do. That they should, a coach is going to think, I should have made sure you were showing up to the gym. I should have made sure you were eating the right shit. I should have helped you more. I should have shown you more. I should have taught you more. I should have given you more. And I should have fucking guided you more. That's what's going through a coach's mind the second you even slip up just a drop. That's a fucking coach. And when you succeed, a coach will not tell you how awesome they are. A coach is going to tell you how awesome fucking you are. Because you freaks are awesome. What else going on out here? Anything? You have any questions? Put them in there. We're rolling. We're rolling. So that was the difference. Are you exercising or are you training? Do you have a trainer or do you have a coach? And we know we want to be training with a coach. That's what we want. A guide. That's what we want. So training recommendations. How much training should you be doing was one of the questions. The peak freak in our system, four to five times a week is the sweet spot. One session per day That's one, or one hour, four to five times a week is the sweet spot. 
if you do, we're talking about group training, really, boot camp, the boot camp sessions, boxing sessions. You would get, if you, people, you could do two sessions a day, right? But you will get the same and probably even better and longer lasting results doing one session a day, four to five times a week, than if you did two sessions a day, five, four, five, or six days a week. But because you might be thinking, oh, I need to really get to this next level faster. So you're going to try and do more. Because all that's going to do, it's going to flow right into our next segment, which is overtraining. Over freaking training. Overtraining usually happens for people who are training. And yes, I said train, not exercise. So you can't exercise and then overtrain because you weren't fucking training in the first place. So the downside, if you're training, is you need to make sure you're keeping it smart and not overdoing it. So training beyond the body's ability, training going overboard beyond the body, your body's ability to recover is what overtraining is. Maybe you want to lose weight faster so you exercise for longer and you exercise harder so you can get better and improve and lose weight at a, at a quicker pace or a quicker rate than, than you think is possible. But without the, the adequate rest and recovery, these, that type of training is just going to fucking backfire and your, your, your performance is going to decrease. Your weight loss will actually start slowing down. You end up training too much. So what do you do? You get hungrier. You get more tired. So conditioning is, it requires a balance of overloading your body, but also freaking recovering. And too much overload and too, too little recovery is just going to make you break down. Not just physically break down. You're going to fucking break down mentally. And we know once that goes, you are all kinds of fucked up. That's what overtraining is. Overtraining just doesn't mean, also doesn't mean necessarily just working out too much. Many other things can lead to overtraining, like not sleeping enough or not drinking enough water or not eating enough carbs or enough calories. You need fuel. You need carbs. Not a ton of them, but you freaking need them. So even if you're not working out a lot, you might even be working out a little and you could still be overtraining if you're not fueling yourself enough, if you're not fueling your body properly or hydrating enough. And, and, and even a little exercise might be overtraining if those two elements are not equal. You can't be this amount of training and then this amount of fuel and hydration. No matter how much it is, you're overtraining. You don't have to be running three hours a day to be overtraining. You could be, you could be working out 30 minutes a day and still be overtraining if you're not doing it right, if you're starving yourself. You need to fuel yourself. No matter what, you need to recover, recover, recover. So what, what is too much and what are signs of overtraining and what is too much, over, what is too much training? Basically, the, the signs of overtraining... You start feeling drained or washed out. You're, you're, you don't have any energy. You're lacking energy. Maybe you have some soreness, a little more than just that normal soreness. You know what I mean? And, and basic aches and pains that, that stick around for longer than they're supposed to. That's overtraining. Pains in your joints and in your muscles, like a pain. Not just a soreness, a fucking pain. And a quick drop in performance. Like you're a, a rock star performance and all of a sudden your performance just hits a fucking wall. Probably overtraining. But don't forget, overtraining could also really just be caused inversely or some other fucking way by lack of hydration, improper nutrition is still overtraining. So that could just be the fix to it. Not even decreasing the training. You could just be increasing the fuel or doing a proper fuel and the proper nutrition, educational eating, right? That's what it's all about. Maybe insomnia is another, another symptom of overtraining or headache, having headaches all the time. People have headaches all the time, might be overtraining. Or you get sick all the time, fucking sick. No matter what you do, you get sick because your body is your immune system is fighting to repair your body nonstop that some person comes by you and there's one fucking sneeze and all of a sudden you have fucking pneumonia because your immune system is broken down from constantly trying to repair because it never had any recovery time because you're overtraining. And then your in, in, your decrease in your training capacity, how much you could actually train is going to go down if you're overtraining. You might even start feeling like depressed overtraining because you because now all this these factors start getting in your fucking head and, and your mind's all fucked up because... You're not, you're not going as hard as you were. You're feeling tired. You're feeling worn down. Your, 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 your numbers, you're not hitting your numbers you used to hit or the speeds you used to hit during your sessions. And so you start getting down on yourself because you're just not having a good performance. So your depression even kicks in from over fucking training. And you just start losing enthusiasm for what you're doing. And then you end up fucking quitting from overtraining to quitting. Makes no sense. Don't do it. Don't let it happen. And then you actually start eating less because you're just so broken down. Your body's doing all kinds of fucked up things inside. You're screwing up your metabolism. Either way, you're going to screw up your metabolism. And you're also going to have a much higher increase for injuries. These are all things that are going to happen with overtraining. So ask yourself, are you overtraining? What else we got going on? Are you overtraining? Then what do you need to do to prevent overtraining or to, to get, get over overtraining is recovery. You need to have a scheduled day off, at least one scheduled day off a week where you're doing nothing. Maybe if you're taking shit to the next level, you're doing some active recovery 
whatever, doing some leisure sport, not like high intensity competitive shit, but you need a, a recovery day or an active recovery day or one full recovery day and an active recovery day. Because I'm telling you, four to five times a week is a sweet spot to get optimal results. You will get the same fucking results one session a day, four to five times a week, then you will do double that amount. You also need to make sure you get rest and sleep. And, and don't just rest your body. Sleep is actually one of my biggest downfalls in my own health and training regimen is not enough. I'm working on it because we all always can improve and work. You should be getting enough sleep. How much sleep are you getting? Put in the comments how much sleep you're getting every day, every night. So recovery, don't just re- recover your, your body. We know everything fucking starts up here. You need to recover your fucking mind. You need to, whatever, whatever you want to call it, visualization, meditation, or whatever, it, whatever works for you, whatever you want to call it, or just simply close your fucking eyes. And while you're awake, we're talking about. Don't just close your eyes and fall asleep and take a fucking nap. That shit ain't what we're talking about. Clear your freaking head. Control your fucking thoughts. Control it. Positivity, positive thoughts. That is literally, that is recovery. You can recover in your freaking mind. And it will help recover your body. It is 100% true. I do that shit all the time. You feel tired and run down and sore and no energy. You go into your own little state of positivity, whatever that is for you. Some Usually it's in some form of closing your eyes while you're awake and you fucking overcome that shit. And you're like a new person. It's recovery. How much sleep are you getting per night? Marjorie's getting seven. Vanessa, six. Margo, seven. So that's right in there. You, everyone knows you want whatever. They say eight hours of sleep. I don't know who they is, but fuck it. But six. I think six is just as good as eight, probably. A lot of times I won't get, won't get six because I'm always on the move. Always trying to make shit happen. But that'd be great. Six, is, six I think, is good enough. Six, seven. You guys are right where you need to be. And you know what? You have one day you can sneak in an extra freaking hour on the weekend or something. So get also how else you can recover is to take your mind off of that stuff after you're kind of physically and mentally recovering. Get some freaking hobbies, hobbies, some other things you're interested in. So because, you, you know, you can only be training a certain amount of hours of the day. And we know you're an obsessed fucking freak, whether it used to be obsessed with food or obsessed with alcohol or drugs or whatever you used to be obsessed with now you're obsessed with fucking training so we want to prevent overtraining and it's going to be by also getting some new hobbies and we're talking about positive vices not some crazy fucking wild hobbies that some of you freaks will come up with so i'll play video games with my kids sometimes as hobbies and you know we'll do shit outside like active stuff outside but just some mindless hobbies even or something that you're interested in find a hobby get a hobby that you could do in to bridge the gap in between that dead space on your calendar Blank spots on your calendar is fucking evil. It will lead you to bad shit. It'll lead you to eating shit. It'll lead you to go away from your goals. Fill up your calendar. Fill up your schedule with shit to do. Get a freaking hobby. So I play, I play video games with Tyson all the time. Because when I was a kid, I would play some video games here and there by myself. Like literally hours and hours and hours and hours and days and months and years by myself. No one's ever played with me. So we hang out. We play video games. We talk. We have freaking fun. We do that here and there. Of course, you know, that's after we've already did all of our, our reading and our our educational stuff and our training and he goes to jiu-jitsu and his soccer practice after all that stuff then we do we have some time and we make some time and do some other stuff like video games or whatever else so what do you do what are some of your hobbies freaks tell me some of your hobbies if it involves i don't know some weird store on route 59 then don't it don't include it one of those weird those that, that weird that store across from the palisades mall don't include that stuff if that's one of your hobbies but what, what are your hobbies tell me your hobbies in the comments what are some of you guys what are your hobbies what do you like to do? What, what, are you, what do you work on? So are you giving yourself enough recovery? So answer all these questions that we went through today. Are you exercising or are you training? Which one are you doing? Then do you have a trainer or do you have a coach? Answer that. Then ask yourself, are you overtraining? Ask yourself, are you recovering enough? How much sleep are you getting? And then what are your hobbies? And if you don't have them, figure it out. Get yourself a freaking hobby to bridge that gap, to get your mind off of something different than your goals and your nutrition just for a minute so you can clear your head and not go to those bad things. You need to have positive, positive vices that you go to. Mahjong twice a week. But those women eat like pigs. Inspire them. Marjorie, inspire them. Go there and talk to them. Set up a, set up a 10-minute talk you could have with them in, in the beginning. Let them know. That they should not be using the mahjong as an excuse to eat like shit. Shit, set it up. I'll come in and talk to them. Bring me in. I'm going to talk to them. I want to talk to your mahjong group. Is this in person or is it online? I guess it's in person. I want to come and speak to the mahjong group 
about their healthy eating habits. We're going to change the fucking Mahjong world out there. We're going to change the Mahjong mindset. I don't know if I'm saying that shit right. Mahjong. Change it. Inspire them. Inspire them. You're around people that, that aren't in your same mindset and doing things the way you do, do shit. Inspire them. Change the fucking world. Make an impact. That's what it's all about. Pay the shit forward. Shit is working for you. It's helping you. It's changing your life. Pay that shit forward. That's what it's all about. What are some more of your hobbies? I'll regret it, but I'll try. I'm not even joking. I will come and, and, and talk to your Mahjong group. Just to talk to them about healthy eating. Nothing about you know coming to the gym or anything like that. I'll just come there. Just to help them out, let them know what, what, how they could change their life in a few simple steps, what they need to think about. We'll just tell them about our educational eating and nutritional discipline. That is it. They need to know about this shit. Some people don't even realize. They think they're eating okay. They think they're eating decent because that's what they're taught in some of those books. They're taught in some fucking college courses. I will, I will come there and hook up. The, we're going to change. That is my new mission, to change the Mahjong freaking world. I'm on a mission. That is one of my new goals. What are some more of your hobbies? What are your hobbies? Put them in the comments. All right, any more questions, you can put them in there. If I miss anything, I'm going to go back through. I'll answer any questions you put in there. I will answer that every single question personally. If you're not watching this live, still answer all these questions. Put your answers in the comments to everything I just asked you, and I will get back to you. If you have any questions about health, fitness, training, nutrition, put it in there. I will help you out. I will hook you up. This shit will change your freaking life. This is Steve Does, episode number four, No Excuses. If you have inspired you, get on your fucking feet. Get on your feet. You all can repeat after me. I want to hear it. No excuses! No excuses!